Okay, well, let's talk just a little bit about prophetic intercession, and then we're just going to do it. So, at the heart of prophetic intercession, if I had to boil it down to a couple of really simple things, it is simply just taking time to pause and ask God, Lord, what is on your heart? for this specific person, for this situation. And we do this before we just launch into prayer. And it's this time of pausing and listening that makes all the difference for several reasons, all right? So first off, when I pause and listen to the Lord before I'm launching into prayer, one, it shows humility, right? It gives the Holy Spirit the chance to show me what's on his heart for the situation instead of just assuming that maybe I know what's best. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, we're, we're praying for God's will to be done, God's kingdom to come, which means I need to actually ask what's on his heart and not assume that what I want or my will are always the same as his. Now, a lot of times, if you've been following Jesus for a long time, um, your heart for a situation may very well be right in line with God's. But the pause does something else that I think is really important. The pause gives us the chance to kind of gain a greater level of specificity in our asking. Um, I know that when I'm praying at times, when I'm praying for situations, I can get a little bit lazy almost and vague in my intercession. And the reality is, is when I pray this way, I might not even recognize when God answers my prayers because I'm not even sure what I'm asking him for. Like, bless this, keep them safe, you know, just very... And again, does God hear those prayers? Absolutely yes. But there's something powerful when we get a specific thing from God's heart and we get to narrow in on that and we get to agree in prayer with him. It's kind of the difference between, you know, my son does archery. You could not really even look at a target and just shoot a bunch of arrows up in the air and hope it hits the target. You know, and sometimes that's how it feels like my prayers are. Or there's other times where I'm like, oh, Lord, I've caught your heart for this thing. I've caught your heart for this situation. And I am zoned in with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus. And we're asking together for a breakthrough to see his kingdom come into that situation. And um, I, I went back to our friend Pete Gregg, who I love, and I remembered a story that he had that was like the perfect picture of this. So I'm going to read this story to you really quick because it's just so inspiring uh, to me to say, yeah, God, I, wanna, I really want to know what's on your heart, and I want to ask specifically to see you move. So here's the story. Pete says this, Someone challenged me one day to pray more specifically for our two sons. You need to find out, they advised, why God created your boys in the first place, the, the calling he placed upon their lives when he knit them together in Sammy's womb, the prayers that he himself is praying for their lives. And then, instead of just telling God what you think he should do for them, you can join in with his prayers, which is way easier and more effective. For me, this was kind of a new way of thinking about things, and it reminded me of a Bible verse. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. What might happen if I stopped trying to get God to say amen to my agenda for our boys in prayer, and I started using my prayer times to say a big fat amen to his promises for their lives instead? And so I decided to spend some time asking God what he wanted instead of telling him what I wanted. Up to this point, my prayers had admittedly become a little bit vague. Lord, bless the boys at school today, keep them safe, give them a good night's sleep, let them know your love, that kind of thing. And I can imagine the Lord saying, yes, fine, fine, but what are you actually asking me to do for them? 
And so I decided I was going to find certain promises in the Bible that seemed relevant to the gifts that he had given them and the hopes that we've nurtured for their lives. And I began to claim these for the boys quite specifically in prayer. And it seemed like a good idea, but I had no idea just how dramatic the results were going to be. One of the words that I began claiming for our sons came from Luke 2.52, where a beautiful thing is said about Jesus as a boy. It says, he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So I took this verse and I began to pray that our boys would grow in wisdom, both academically with man, but also spiritually with God that they would grow in stature, that they would mature and be healthy physically, but also that they'd grow in their spiritual authority. I began to pray that they'd grow in favor, that they'd have favor with their peers, favor with their teachers, but that they'd also grow in favor with the Lord. My prayers were becoming less vague, more focused than they had been before. A couple of weeks later, a remarkable thing happened. The boys were tucked up in bed when one of them called out and we found him sitting bolt upright in bed and he just shouted out, I need God, he said. I want to pray that prayer. So what a joy it was to kneel by his bedside that night as he surrendered his life to Jesus. Right before our eyes, he was growing in wisdom and stature and favor. But then get this. The following day, Sammy's sister called to say that she had had a vivid dream regarding this particular son. Knowing nothing about the decision he just made, nor the verse that I had recently begun claiming for his life, she described a man who appeared in our study to say that this son had found favor with God. Sammy and I were just awestruck. Within days of beginning to ask for wisdom and stature and favor, one of our boys had given his life to the Lord, and his aunt had received a dream more than 40 miles away on the very night he did so, in which an angelic visitor had confirmed that he had indeed found favor. So I want you to understand just how powerful it is when we stop praying just our own prayers based on our own inclinations and we start praying God's prayers based on his plans instead. When we identify relevant promises in God's word and focus them in on a particular person, a place, or a situation, you can be sure that you are interceding for them in line with God's purposes and therefore in the name of Jesus. Amen? Isn't that an encouraging story? Isn't it encouraging to know that as we catch his heartbeat and we pray in line with his will, um, in some ways I think we begin to see uh, prayer answered in more uh, powerful ways. And, um, you know, you heard in that illustration too that one of the main places that Pete went to look uh, for things to pray outright was straight to the scriptures. And still more than ever, God will speak to us. Um, I think in so many times, the primary way that he speaks to us is through his word. And I can tell you that almost every intercessory breakthrough situation that I've really contended for in prayer that I've seen God answer is very much tied to specific scriptures that God has given to me to partner with, uh, to call forth uh, his kingdom to come in those things. All right. So the last thing that I want to touch in, and then we're just going to move actually right into worship, is that we are going to receive, and I think hear more accurately, when we're in this place of intimacy and connection with the Lord. Um, oftentimes, when I move into intercession for something, there's some kind of challenging situation that is happening around me, and it is the enemy's goal to always keep your eyes fixed on what he's doing. He wants you to uh, see the chaos that he's causing, and that almost always disrupts my ability to pray with the faith and the authority that I've been given in Jesus. 
But Ephesians 2, right, tells us that we have been seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. And so when I move into this place of listening and interceding, I want to move up into that seat, right, above the fray where the enemy's working, right? And I want Jesus's eyes for a particular situation so that I put more faith in God's plans and God's purposes and God's power and God's goodness and God's love than I do in the enemy's ability to um, steal and kill and destroy. And so for me, when I'm moving into that place of listening and prophetic intercession, one of the key ways that I change my vantage point is through worship. It is through praise. You know, it's back to what... um, Pastor Keith has been preaching around here for a long time that when we praise, right, it moves us up into that place of authority. It allows us to pray powerful prayers that overcomes the enemy. And I think a lot of that power and praise comes because it shifts our eyes. It reminds us of who God is, and it gives us a kingdom perspective, And so um, I've been in a place of prayer and intercession uh, for about 20 years, and I can tell you that over and over and over again, my most powerful times of hearing God's voice, feeling like I'm just zoned in uh, with his heart in prayer and intercession for people, for situations, flows right out of that place of praise and worship. But as we close and do kind of a final worship song, when we were, uh, yeah, getting ready uh, for this night, um, we had just had a group of these awesome students, woohoo, um, who had attended the Bold Conference down in Kansas City. And I tell you what, when I want to be encouraged right now, um, and really, uh, I just, I am like, what's God doing in the students? Because uh, God's doing so many beautiful things. And so, I asked a couple of them if they would just come up and share a little bit about their time. So Riley and Hannah, if you're open to, did Hannah make it tonight? There, where is she? There, Uh, there she is. (laughs) Sorry, I lost you. So I asked them if they would be open to sharing a little bit about what was impactful for them um, as they worshiped at the Bold Conference. Um, And then just kind of what's on their heart? How are they praying for students in this generation? And they're going to then pray a blessing over any kids and students in the room tonight. So, Riley, do you want to start us off? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. hello. Okay. So, um, definitely I was super excited for the Bold Conference. Um, I knew that God was going to work somehow, but I just didn't really know exactly what he was going to do. And I will tell you, I was not at all prepared for what he did. Um... Basically, for some context, I just graduated high school, and I had this whole plan. I was going to go to Iowa State. It was going to be great. Um, I had this perfect major planned out. I had a great roommate. And going into this conference the first two days, I honestly felt distracted. I felt like I couldn't really connect and, like, hear God's voice. But someone said, like, we're just going to keep flexing the muscle. Like, just keep doing it. And so... I was like, okay, God, like, I'm just going to keep pressing in. Like, I just really want to hear from you. And someone said at one point, one of the speakers was like, "Um, pray scary prayers, like things you can't believe are coming out of your mouth. And I was like, all right, like, I'll do that. And I just kind of didn't realize, like, what I was doing. So I just kind of surrendered. I was like, God, send me. And the third day, it was in the afternoon during, um, right after one of the worship sessions, I just sat down and I clearly heard from God, don't go to Iowa State. And that was scary. It was like, I have, like, it's really late in the summer. And I was like, I have this whole plan. And so it was scary, but I was also excited because I was like, God's really going to be able to use me. And so I just want to encourage you, like, God can totally use anyone. And I kind of saw myself as this reserved, like, quiet person. And, like, God uses anyone. And you just have to, like, ask him, say, I want you to use me, God. And He totally did, and now I'm just so excited. I honestly don't know what's next. I'm just still praying into that, Um, but I just keep, like, relying on him, and he's so good, so. Come on. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, Riley. Hannah, share what, how was the Bold Conference for you? What was on your heart there? 
For me, I was going into it like, really excited that I was going to be able to take like, like, a break from work because I'm working like, full time this summer and also being able to just be refreshed spiritually and mentally. So the whole week for me was, was coming off college orientation. I'm also going to Iowa State. I'm going to Iowa State this fall. And so I'm just thinking about how I can be mentally prepared and like all, all the stuff that I just get kind of all, in, all your ducks in a row for all that. And then coming into it thinking, okay, Lord, how can I continue to grow spiritually? Because I mean, core is over now for all of us and who are seniors that we just graduated. And I'm thinking about, Lord, how can I get plugged in or how can I minister to people? And so going into Bold, I was asking the Lord just for two things, like, can I be refreshed and encouraged? So going into it, I was like, well, okay, how can I think about just being fulfilled spiritually in some ways, just saying, hey, God, I'm looking for just needing to hear from you today, just something special. So he just really touched me in a way, just saying, I'm here for you. I'm going to continue to encourage you and give you the strength and energy to keep going. And then he really just put boldness in me to just say, when you're going to go off to college and you're, you're on your own, you're going to be able to the freedom to make any decision you want, but also knowing that you also have so much strength and spiritual boldness to go forth and be a witness to, to my roommate or even within my own classes. So I'm really looking forward to how I can use the encouragement I've received to encourage others. Yeah, amen. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Hannah. Good. All right, what's been kind of on your heart for this generation of students? How would you, uh, how are you praying for students right now or kids your age that are asking these big questions? So, yeah, yeah, I'm just praying for revival. Honestly, like yeah. it's totally Gen Z. Like we're coming, like Amen. the world's not ready, honestly. Like <laughs> there's just a fire that's starting. Like I know it, I saw you guys, like literally it's, I'm just excited. Like, yeah. it's such an exciting time, and yeah. there's so much. Yeah, Beautiful, good. How about you, Hannah? For me, I've been praying for, I guess, boldness in my own life, but also in the lives of others, especially as us Christians, and how yep. we can be encouraging those in our community, in our schools, and even our coworkers and other friends, we just, as we kind of go out and about throughout our day, yeah. and I'm praying for more clarity and truth. Yeah, amen, that's beautiful, good, awesome. Well, if you are a, a student in the room tonight, would you be willing to stand up? These ladies just wanna pray a blessing over you, so if you're a student of any age, can we pray blessing over you tonight? Good. Riley, you want to start and then Hannah and then I'll close us? Okay, that'd be awesome. God, thank you for being so good to us. You're such a good father and you're so faithful and we praise you for that and we praise you for the work that you're doing in Gen Z right now. Um, I just bless the students that are standing in this room right now. Um, that you just um, pour over them your love so they know their true identity, who they are in you, so that they can go out to their homes, to their classrooms, and just um, bring your love and your light. We just pray that the hallways of their schools are just filled with the Holy Spirit, um, That's right. that they're able to um, unashamedly pray for their uh, classmates and their friends, and that they can start prayer meetings and just um, really be working for you in the kingdom. So we thank you for their boldness and their bravery going out, bringing the gospel to their classmates. Amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you for all that you are, all that you have done, and all that you're going to continue to do. I pray for people in schools and their communities within the church and anywhere that they go, Lord, there be grace and truth that is yeah. preached everywhere we go. Yeah. May there be clarity of thought, of speech, and even just spiritual clarity, Lord, as you continue to reveal things to us. Will we be bold in speaking truth out in our schools? We, you know what we need to That's hear right. from you, Lord. We pray that we would continue to be that light and that encouragement, Lord. We thank you. Yeah. And Lord, as I was just uh, walking and worshiping and praying in the room tonight before we got started, I just, I, I saw you anointing these students' feet, Lord. And for all the ground that it feels like the enemy has tried to steal from this generation, Lord, we just anoint their feet to take it back in the name of Jesus. So we thank you that as they walk the hallways of their school and their campuses and their workplaces and their neighborhoods, Lord, we thank you that they're going to shine so bright 
rightly and so boldly for Jesus, Lord. And we thank you that the enemy does not know what's coming, just like Riley said, Lord. So we thank you for ground being taken this year, Lord, as these students just shine brightly and boldly for you, God. So we are so blessed to have them in this community, in this house, and we just continue to pray that every good plan and purpose that you have for each of their lives would come to pass, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.